we need to go down on this. All right. So we are here for day two of our Luna Solo. And as I was getting ready at the very last second, I realized that I prepped the wrong, <laughs> the wrong um, elastic. Oh, I thought I pulled a fabric. Oh, I did. So I'm going to recut something super fast while we have some more friends join us. All right. So I had prepped, I'm all set for tomorrow, I guess. I had prepared the, um, fold over elastic. I thought that's what I was doing today. I guess not. <laughs> um, on the blog today, I have um, lingerie elastic and knit binding. So I had the knit binding prepped, but I did not have the lingerie. Ooh, I almost cut my cord. You guys, this is, this is an interesting project for me. It has been the whole time. So I just need to cut a couple more of these out really quickly so that I can do the right one. So I just grabbed some scrap for this view because I use the um, reverse French Terry for my cami and then I do have another bralette, I think. Yeah, I don't know what I have. Oh, I'll use that bralette tomorrow. So yeah, that's the way this project goes. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes just things go smooth and sometimes you're just crazy. All right, so that's that. I'll cut my elastic in a minute. All right, I did have yesterday, I was asked about how to move the straps of the um, camion. If you have narrow shoulders, sometimes even with the strap shortened, you'll find that they'll split off of your shoulders. So somebody had asked how to move those. And I have it figured out in a very easy way. You wanna print off the pattern size that you need and then print a second pattern in a smaller size. So I went two sizes down to get um, a significantly smaller um, sleeve placement. So this is how you're going to do it. So I'm using the extra large and the medium for this. So the blue line is the extra large. Right there you can see that's the top of the cami. And then don't cut that out yet take your smaller size and cut it out and you only need to print the neckline of it. You don't need to print the entire other size. Cut the neckline of the smaller one out and line it up with the cami. So you're gonna line up this, the fold seam and then you can see that the necklines are lined up and then you're going to trace the smaller neckline in place. So obviously this goes lower here. So then what I did after I got to about this section right here, I took my French curve and just blended the line. If you don't have a French curve, you can eyeball it. It's not a big deal. You can eyeball it. It doesn't need to be exact. But that's how I would move those straps inward. It's just like that. So those pink Yes. lines that are drawn right there. That's how I would do that. So um, I'll get this photographed. I'll get it added to yesterday's blog post. Um, hopefully sometime this week. We'll see how that goes. All right. So now, if I'm correct, we're doing lingerie elastic today. And I'm using the bralette for this example. And it doesn't matter if you're doing the bralette, the cami, or the nighty. your first step 
is to sew your side seams together. So just line it up right sides together. You can pin it in place, clip it, whatever works best for you. you pull this closer to me here. And I'm just gonna sew those side seams. There's a lot going on in this house right now. All right, so just sew down the side seams. I'm using my serger. Um, you can do this all with a standard sewing machine. And if you do have a standard sewing machine, you can use a straight stitch to sew your side seams. Those seams don't need any stretch. So just run a straight stitch down them. I do like to lengthen my stitch a little bit if I'm sewing knits, but um, otherwise, I don't use a zigzag stitch unless that hem or unless that seam specifically needs to stretch. Alright. Okay. So those are our side seams. I'm still like, where did I have fold over elastic in my head? See, this is what happens. <laughs> All right, side seams are in place, and now our lingerie elastic. There's my pattern pieces. So we need to cut these out yet. I have two lingerie elastics here. I'm going to use the one with the decorative edge. So if you remember, lingerie elastic has the two edges, um, two types. One is straight. And then the, this one has the decorative edge. And this does have the plush back. I am so flustered. <laughs> I can't. Ugh. I'm still like, man. I thought I was all set to go <laughs> with everything. I had it all nice and prepped. I was ready to go by like 9.30 this morning. And here I am. Oh, well roll with it right and then on top of that I forgot my kid had a cello lesson so it's virtual so that's not a big deal but it's at 115 and so we may have some cello music going on in the background so yeah again we're just gonna roll with it all right So I have my front and back neckline pieces cut, and now I'm going to cut the band. So what was that? Okay, I'm making sure. I hit, so when his teacher messages, you might hear it. I'm hoping that it doesn't kick off my live. Fingers crossed on that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and cut my other strap really quickly so that those are all done. Look at me, I thought I was all prepped for today and here I am still cutting. So when you cut your straps, you want to make sure that you transfer those star markings, remember, to your pattern piece. I'm going to throw some clips on here. then we are on our way. All right, I'm only going to mark one of those. Whew, deep breath in. All right, switch my machines, get that out of the way. I thought it was all cleaned up too and had it nice and clean, but all right, I have my machine. So get this set. Now, I like to do this a little bit differently, which may or may not surprise you guys. I am a rule breaker, but you have to know the rules to break them. Full disclosure, know your rules to break your rules. We are going to sew elastic on this first step with a straight stitch, which I know goes against everything 
but it works, I promise. It's just a basting stitch, so it's all good. All right, I have the center of my neckline. Can you see? Center of the neckline marked. I see comments. Uh, I don't have very many comments. I hope my comments are working. I've had that happen before where I couldn't see any comments and they just stopped working. So it's one thing to talk to yourself, but it's another thing to like really be talking to yourself. So, <laughs> which is fine. I talk to myself all the time. I'll even answer myself. It's all good. So center of the neckline marked, center of the binding is marked. And now I'm going to put, or not binding, lingerie elastic. So this lingerie elastic has two sides, a right side and a wrong side, I guess, or a plush side and a flat side. I'm going to put the flat side against the right side of my neckline and pin them in place right in the middle. So the plush side is up. Oh, yeah, you comment. <laughs> Thanks, Mariah. So, yay, it works. All right. So the flat side of the elastic is against the right side of my fabric. The plush side is up and I have lined up the straight side of my elastic with the cut edge because I'm doing the decorative. So now I'm gonna take the end of my elastic and just line it up to the top and just like that. So it's all lined up right there. And now I'm going to use, like I said, a straight stitch to sew this in place. And I'm going to sew I'll show you after I'm done, but I'm going to sew right along this decorative edge, like maybe an eighth of an inch away at that. So I'm getting that all lined up, putting it under my presser foot, and now I'm not going to stretch it first. I'm just going to sew. And I am back stitching. So I'm going to sew it about an inch before I stretch. And that just, it anchors everything in and then I don't want any pulling up here. Oh, Lauren, do you have to finish the bralette or can you include it with the cami binding? Okay, so if you're sewing the built-in shelf bra, you, you will finish the bralette and the cami neckline at the same time. So um, we'll do that tomorrow. I show you how to do all that. Um, today, this is just, if you're sewing, just the individual bralette, like, um, like this, just the individual bralette, or just the cami with no bralette, or just the nighty with no bralette. We'll do the built-in shelf tomorrow. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm going to grab my water. Goodness, oh my goodness. Okay. Yeah, I'm straight stitching. Yep. It's a straight stitch. I know it's elastic, but there is no water in there. Oh my gosh, you guys. <laughs> it's a straight stitch. And it's just a basting stitch really. So I've sewn the first inch with no stretching. And now I'm going to stretch my elastic so that it matches the length of my neckline. Keep that raw edge lined up with the edge of the elastic. And just sew. So like I said, it's just a basting stitch. I like the way the edge folds over better with a straight stitch versus using a zigzag. You can use a zigzag stitch. Like if if this is too, too um, against the rules for you, I completely understand. Use a zigzag stitch, use a stretch stitch, but I like the straight stitch. So again, because I just, I didn't stretch at the beginning, I relaxed my elastic here at the end and then clipped it an inch from the end. And then I am stretching where that clip is, so an inch from the end. 
because I don't want to stretch that last inch so that it's even with the other side. I tend to, I keep getting, my last couple I've had more gathers on this side than the other side and I don't know, obviously I'm not stretching something equally but it is what it is. So there we go. We have that attached and now we're going to fold it to the wrong side. So we have it, there's our wrong side and we're going to fold that elastic over and then you see that little pretty decorative edge just sticks out. It pops out. Go get water, we're good. I have some coffee over there if I really, if I really um, need it. Like I said, it's this project you guys do you ever have that like we're just everything it should be simple you've done it before it should be simple but everything you do just something happened and it's all just minor stuff but still it just kind of adds to the project this has been one of those but like I said it's all good so now I've I have switched to a zigzag stitch I like a zigzag stitch, just the traditional one, versus the lightning bolt stitch or the, the um, some machines have a dedicated stretch stitch. I don't like them. Um, I don't know if it's my machine or me, a combination of both. I think the lightning bolt stitch or the three step straight stitch, they use a lot of thread and if something goes wrong, it is difficult to rip it out. So I just use a zigzag stitch. So again, I'm going to sew the first inch. Oh, <sighs> I didn't change my stitch length <laughs> because that's the way this goes. All right, for my zigzag stitch, I like a 3.5 for the width and a five for the length. So it's kind of a medium width and then as long as my machine can go. And I'm, oh, because the fabric I was gonna use was a different color, this thread would have shown up. So I'm just stretching the neckline back out gently because I don't want to have any gathers sewn into it. We can see the stitches so I stitched pretty much right down the center I did my goal was to stitch closer to the edge but that didn't happen but that's okay so that is how you attach the elast the lingerie elastic super simple if you have a really slinky fabric I would suggest the lingerie elastic for your finish because it's the it's the easiest to do it's the most simple. There's no folding over. There's no catching raw edges. It's it's on and it's done. And you can use the lingerie elastic for your straps as well. I'm just going to mock up the strap because I don't have that other side sewn up. But you would want to sew a loop and making sure it's not twisted. So I'm just going to sew the ends together to create a loop here. Just like before, we're going to take the, the smooth edge, or the smooth side straight edge, and we're going to lay it down against there. And that seam that I just sewed into the elastic, I'm lining that up with the side seam. Like that. And then those star markings, those get brought up to the neckline on each side. 
clip in place. And then same over here. And then just like before, you would sew that in place and then flip it over and then zigzag it down and then you'll have that would be your strap so your plush side is against your skin and the decorative edge is to the outside of your shoulder so yeah that's lingerie elastic and this is from Surge so like I said one stop shopping for your Luna loungewear <laughs> All right, that one I don't need today. Binding. Are we ready for this? I hope. I hope, I hope, I hope. I have the band cut too. So I have, I think this is on the blog today. I don't even know. Okay, um, sometime could you talk about thread and needles to work best? Oh, that's a great idea, Melanie. Yeah, I can do that. Um, yeah, I just, all of my thread is the Guterman. I like it. Um, some machines are particular about um, what thread they use. Mine's not. Mine will take, what is it, Coates and Clarks? Is that that brand? Mine's not picky. But yeah, I, I, that's a great idea for a blog post, too. So I think we could do that. And then um, needles. So... This is double brushed poly and I'm just using a ballpoint needle. If a fabric has a high um, spandex, um, I'll typically grab a stretch needle. But I'm gonna show you also how to do this comfort band instead of the elastic. My, my thought process is to do that today too. We'll see how this goes. All right, binding. This is what our binding is gonna look like. So binding wraps around the raw edge of our fabric as a finishing option. I'm gonna find my piece. All right, so we're going to, can we see? We're going to take our binding piece and locate the center of it and match the center of the binding with the center of the neckline and pin it in place and these are right sides together and just like before we're going to match the end up I again I'm using a straight stitch so going to line the end up here and the cut edges are lined up you can see that well kind of get this under my machine Again, I am not stretching for the first inch. I was watching that and I was just thinking, please don't suck my fabric into the plate, Therese. Please don't suck the fabric into the throat plate. <laughs> All right, I'm good. If that does happen to you, if you start like a quarter of an inch or a half inch away from the raw edge, that will help. And then like I'll sew a few stitches forward Instead of back stitching, I'll turn the fabric around, drop the needle, pivot the fabric around, and then sew from the edge. That will help. Or you can slide a little piece of tissue paper underneath there to give some stability to your fabric if that happens to you. So after I have that first inch sewn, then I'm going to stretch my binding to fit the neckline. And we're going to sew this on with a 3 8 seam allowance. And so, yeah, we're just going right sides together. And just like before, I just relaxed the end and clipped down about an inch, and then that's where I'm stretching from. And it's just a gentle stretch, especially with this double brush poly, it's a really gentle strip stretch um, if you're using double brush poly you might find that you need to shorten your straps a little bit but um, otherwise no changes are needed 
And actually, because the double brush poly sticks to itself so nicely, it's actually a really good fabric to do this with for the first time. So now that's what it looks like after it's sewn on. I should have taken off my cutting board. And now we're going to take our binding and press it up away from the seam. So we have this and now wrap it over encasing that raw edge. So let me clip one. So there's our raw edge right there. I take the binding, that's what you see up here, and just wrap it around. So we're not folding it. You don't want this. You want to have, can you see the seam right there? You want the binding sticking up. So we haven't folded all the way over. We, we haven't folded the seam allowance over. We're wrapping the binding around the seam allowance and the seam allowance stays pushed away from the seam. So you have a couple options here. You can just fold it over one time, just like that. If this is new to you, I would highly recommend this. It's easier and less finicky and because it's knit fabric it's not going to fray and we can just trim any excess so you can see on this one I just trimmed away the excess now when I go to sew the strap on I'll show you how to if you want to enclose the raw edge of the binding as well I'll show you how to do that when I get to the strap but right now let's just focus on just folding it over one time and I'm using these wonder clips to hold it in place. Now we're going to zigzag stitch again. And we're going to zigzag stitch. Oh, come on. Come on there. Can you see it? I'm on the binding side. I can't get close enough to there. So we're going to zigzag stitch on the binding side. Alright. So again, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, a 3.5 width and a 5 length is what I like. And then I'm going to zigzag on the binding side. gently pull it straight if it's gathered a little bit. Like I said, my double brush poly doesn't have a lot of recovery, so I don't have that significant gather. It wasn't a really significant gather, but it was a gentle gather that the lingerie elastic had. Doesn't feel smooth. I'm just sewing right along that seam and I'm staying on the binding side of that seam. So there you go. Oh, I knew it didn't feel flat there, but I'm going to leave it because you can't see. So what do I mean on the binding side? So right here where this flower is. So this is the cami side. This is the binding side. I am only sewing on the binding side of the seam. You can see it right up here. I sewed on the binding side. I didn't sew on the cami side. So when you wrap that fabric over, you want to make sure that you cover that seam. And then when you sew it on, So it would just be at the top of the garment. Yeah, pretty much at the top of the garment. So yeah, that's along the neckline. Oof. My camera is being funny. So yep, yeah, right there on the binding side of the seam. And then we can trim this. Test my luck here. So they do have special scissors. Like there's some, I, I think they might be embroidery scissors. I don't know, but they're a duckbill scissor. And they have this thing on the side to help you prevent from catching fabric. 
So can you see the inside? Yeah. Right there. So you see this excess? I'm gonna trim that away. Right here, my seam allowance tucked under. I'm leaving it. So yeah, and then right, maybe you can see, I was hoping that gray would show up. See that stitch? So when I wrap the binding over, it covered the straight stitch. So you just wrap the binding right around the seam allowance, really. And when I trim, I hold my breath and I wish with all my might that I do not cut <laughs> the main fabric. So could have folded under, okay. <laughs> all right. So yes, when I do the arm strap, arm strap, when I do the strap, I'll show you how you can fold under that raw edge. But if you're new to this technique and new to knit on bindings, knit on bindings, new to bindings on knit, I do recommend that you just fold it over and not worry about that raw edge. So when I trim it, like I said, I hold my breath and I I hope and hope and hope that I don't cut my main fabric <laughs> and I just get that really close and after I get the first snip I pull on the fabric can you see that I'm pulling and it kind of pulls it away from the seam and I go super slow and the whole time I hold my breath and I'm saying, please don't cut my main fabric. Please don't cut my main fabric. Please don't cut my main fabric. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a hot mess. That's okay. I'm going to show you. So now I'm just going to take my blade. And it's easier to do when you have a small section. And just run it up in there. And cut it so that it's cleaned up. So don't cut your stitching, don't cut your mane. But there. Whew. Yes, I need to get some duckbill scissors. But honestly, I I don't do it this way much. I do usually tuck it under. So all right, that's good enough for now. Let me get the other side where it's going to be in my strap. Whew. All right. Oh, my attention to detail is getting to, okay I have to walk away from that for now <laughs> all right our straps let's do our strap here's my strap piece I've already sewn the short ends together my clips are marking those star markings now I'm going to lay out my cami bralette nighty whichever we are sewing right side up I have the center seam right down here in the middle and I'm going to take the seam oh something I want to go over okay pattern piece for the arm binding shows the stretch okay sorry stretch should be with the length so that all right so you know what, I didn't even catch that. Is this what you mean? Now that my words are backwards, I, I didn't even look at this. Um, yeah, that's not correct. If this is what your strap piece, if it's labeled to have the stretch go the short direction, no. Your stretch needs to go the length. So you need it stretchy that direction. It's not going to work if your stretch is this direction. And I'm, I'll tell you also, if you're short on fabric and you think you can get away with cutting your straps out of your four-way stretch double brush poly, with the stretch going another way, there's still not enough stretch. Which is why I have contrasting bands on this because I ran into that. 
So, yeah, you do. You need the stretch to go the long direction. Thank you. I will get that typo noted so that we can get that corrected. I'll pass that along to Tammy. She'll want to know that. All right, so when I sew my short ends, no, you're not going crazy. Thank you for letting me know. I, I didn't even look at my pattern piece. I just, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in my zone. When I sew my short ends, I don't sew this with my serger. I can get a flatter, smaller, less bulky seam allowance if I sew it with my sewing machine because when I attach this, I'm going to open that seam <laughs> open <laughs> there <laughs> I'm gonna open that seam up like that so that it's less bulky so I just sew that with my sewing machine right side down seam of the strap lined up with the center seam of the cami flip it in place and then those star markings Go up with the neckline on each side. One. And then two. Whew. All right. So I did that all right sides together. And now I'm going to start at the... Do, 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 do. We're just basting. I'm going to start at one neckline and use a straight stitch again and go just to the other neckline. That's as far as we need to go for this step. Make sure everything is all lined up nicely. Alright, again, 3 8 inch seam allowance. over, straight, long, basting stitch. And again, I'm sewing the first half inch, 10 inch without stretching, and then stretch to get the strap to fit the armhole. I don't think this is technically an arm side. Is it an arm side? Because an arm side, arm side, is where a sleeve attaches. We're not attaching a sleeve. So is this, I don't know what this would be called. I don't know. So I'm just gonna go from one neckline to the other. Using the same technique that I did for my um, neck binding. Move. My seam allowance got a little crazy there. Alright, so this time we're going to fold the binding away from the body. So binding and seam allowance are going upward. Flip it over to the wrong side. Move this so you can see. And now I do want to enclose the raw edge on this one. So I'm going to fold over the raw edge of the binding a quarter of an inch and then I'm going to fold it over a second time so that it covers that seam. So fold over about a quarter of an inch. See that? And then fold over the rest of the way so that it... Can you see that seam? So I'm fold over so that it covers that seam or just stick with the summer basics okay how wide finished with could a person make a knit binding if you're not the biggest fan of the thin straps okay now my Seymour buttons not working Mariah let me Ugh. you okay I can't see the rest of your comment you can make a that's such a good idea. <laughs> you could make them an inch wide, an inch and a half probably. Just, um, you would just have to math it out. I really like that idea. I kind of want to do that now. <laughs> you know, how many Lunas can I make in a week? 
I really like that idea. Oh my goodness, you're genius. So yeah, you could do that. You could have a nice, you might find that you need to lower, lower your arm. Oh, you just typed alternatives. Okay, thank you. <laughs> you might need to lower the arm. So if you did like an, let's say you did an inch for a finished width, you, you may want to drop this, you know, where it goes in right there. I would probably drop that an inch also because otherwise that binding is going to be riding up into your armpit. But that's such a good idea. I like that. So yeah, you could do that. You can make your straps as wide as you like. Oh my goodness. I, I love that idea. I want to make that now. <laughs> so I like to go uh, both like from neckline to neckline first before I deal with the strap. And again, you're not folding the seam allowance to the wrong side. You're just folding that binding around the seam allowance. You're encasing the seam allowance. It's a little finicky, but it's not, it's not terrible in the terms of sewing. I'm going to trim that binding sewing things. Um, if you're folding that over twice, it's like I said, it's definitely simpler if you don't fold the binding edge once. What I did was my seam allowance got off just a hair. Like I just trimmed an eighth of an inch. And so my binding was sticking out um, a little bit far. So I just trimmed that. So this is where my seam allowance carries on from where I attached it. So you're going to have one side that wants to fold over on its own. This is the side that we're folding. So if you're not folding your raw edge over, you're just gonna fold that around and then stitch. But because I'm folding my raw edge under, I'm gonna fold it under about a quarter of an inch. So you'll see that like this, ooh, this side is about three eighths of an inch. I'm gonna fold that side over about a quarter of an inch and then the folded edges are meeting. I hope I explained that well. You're basically making double fold binding. This is what it is. It's not, it's not double fold bias tape because we didn't cut it on the bias, but the construction of it is identical. So just clipping these in place, you want, you can press this as you go to that, that may help with frustration levels as well. But um, I'm just rolling with it, because <laughs> why not? All right, I'm almost there. And then we're going to sew this again with a zigzag stitch. I don't want a straight stitch for this. I mean, there is a technique, but we're not gonna get into that. So stretch stitch for this. If you have a cover stitch machine, you can do this bindings with the cover stitch machine. But um, I'm doing all of this with the standard sewing machine because that's what the majority has. All right, again, 3.5 for my width, five for my length. How are we on time? All right. I like to start at so many clips. I like to start at my side seam for this. And again, I'm just zigzag stitching. we go right along that binding and if you have it where it's gathering just gently straighten it out 
As you go. It doesn't look right. Something's going. I'm just running with it. And then when you get to the strap, you're just going to keep going. Ah! My seam allowance just decided to jump ship. You're just going to sew it right along that folded edge. Going all over the place. Come on. This looks pretty. <laughs> I don't know at this point. I feel like my fabric is moving on me. I may have some decisions to make. I made it. All right, it did move. <laughs> okay, it slipped on me. That's okay. I'll. I'll deal with it later. But that's my strap. And it's all encased right there. Oh, I missed a lot. Look at that. And that's why I said it's easier and less finicky if you um, sew, sew it without folding it under first. So, like, I, I just, I, I just didn't catch it <laughs> but I did here that's what you want it to look like right like that and so I just sewed it right along the binding edge also can a ribbing be used um yes you can use a rib knit easily for the body if you're using a rib knit for the straps you may find that you need to shorten the straps because not all ribbing is created equal. Some ribbing is great and it has a high spandex content and it really holds its shape, but some ribbing stretches out really easily. So depending on your ribbing, you may want to shorten your straps. I did shorten for double brushed poly because it doesn't, it doesn't have a lot of recovery and the weight of, especially the 90, can really pull that down. So I did shorten my straps for that. All right, let's get this band sewn on. So you would do that with both straps. I am only sewing one strap right now. There's my band. All right, this is in the tutorial. Okay, so like a bias tape, yes. The knit binding goes on exactly like bias tape. Alright, so comfort band for the cami. I cut this lengthwise per the elastic measurement for the bralette. And then my height, I wanted it about two inches finished. So this direction is four and three quarters inches. And I mark the center or it is essentially the center. And after I sew those short ends together, again, I'm going to open my seam allowance up here. And then fold it wrong sides together with the long edges lined up. So I'm just like you're making a giant cuff. We're just making a band. It's really humid here today and <laughs> just like that deep breath was touching my breath because humidity plays a heck of a time with my asthma so in case you're wondering that was not a sigh of exasperation or anything it's it's just asthma <laughs> all right so now I'm finding the quarter points of my band I 
I don't know if you can hear, but I can hear, I think, I, I think it's my son playing. I don't know if it's him or his teacher playing, but it's so pretty. I love a cello. All right. So to attach the band, take your cami, or your bralette, I mean, and lay it out. And take your band and take that seam and line it up with one side seam. And then line up that halfway point with the other side seam. I think that's my son. So just all of the cut edges are lined up. And now line up those other two marks with the center front and center back. I need to sneeze. Oh goodness. So we're doing this all right sides together. Alright, last one. And I'm going to attach this with my serger. If you don't have a serger, this is a step that you want to use a stretch stitch or a zigzag stitch or something like that on. No straight stitch for bands. Now I'm just going to sew this, serge it in place. And you need to stretch the band slightly as you go. wrong pedal. I lost it. Okay. Stretch the band slightly as we attach the band to the bottom of our bra. to work in quarters almost well, maybe even eights Ugh. it's time for new blades and so my the seam allowance tends to curl up and get into the way sometimes There's the band. All right, comfort yoga bands. <laughs> I love a yoga band, man. They, you know, why fight with elastic when you don't have to? Which, by the way, Tammy sent me that Clover Bodkin. <gasps> Game changer. So I'm excited to share that with you guys, I believe, on Thursday. So I'll get that other strap. I'll fix this strap. There's a little bralette going on so um these are so comfortable i like them a lot so that is i was gonna say that's all i have for today you know an hour later i feel like that was a lot of information if you have any questions you can ask me now 
you can email me. Um, I tend to miss, sorry, I'm scrolling through the comments as I go, make sure I didn't miss anything. I tend to miss comments in this feed after the video is ended. So um, feel free to just create a new post and tag me if, if it lets you tag me. Tag me please. I get a lot of notifications and I the ones that have me tagged have a greater chance of staying at the top than posts that I'm not tagged in. So tomorrow we sew the shelf bra. You are very welcome, Sandy. And I think that's it. I need to double check. So I'm all flustered because I, I prepped the wrong thing today. And I believe we do fold over elastic tomorrow, which I have tricks for this too. So um, this is that reverse French Terry from Surge. Look how nice that drape is. Like, it's not really heavy, but it's, it, it's like substantial. It's not thin. Yes, tomorrow will be the um, built-in bralette that's built into the cami. So, um, I will be using, I don't think I'm going to use the power mesh for the um, live tomorrow because it it's so difficult to see it uh, the right side versus wrong side so I think I'll just use a contrasting fabric for it for tomorrow but yes I will go over how to sew that tomorrow so um okay so even though sorry I'm reading Terry's comment whoa they all just moved not what I wanted to do. See more. Okay. You are very welcome, Terry. Yes, you, all of these can be, they'll always be here in the group. Just click on the videos um, link that's on the, if, if you're on a computer, it's on the left hand side. I'm also, I've been transferring them to our YouTube channel so you can find them there. And then I also repost them inside the blog post for the day. So, Yesterday's live video is in yesterday's blog post. This live video, after I get it all processed, will be in today's blog post. So, yeah, they are in lots of places so that you guys can watch these when it's convenient for you. So, all right, um, so with me. <laughs> so with me so that you can enter to win a gift certificate. How about that? And you'll have awesome loungewear. Did you guys see Tessa had paired her Luna with the Ravina skirt, which is absolutely adorable together. So, um, oh good, I'm glad that's helpful. So, uh, yeah, Tessa has the cutest outfit. Tessa is the cute, she just has the best wardrobe. I love it. I actually, when I was talking to her earlier today, I told her this is my Tessa outfit. I put on a maxi skirt and a tank. Um, this. My skirt is actually, this is the um, Olympia skirt. I, um, I weighed a little bit more when I made my Olympia dress and I loved, I loved it so much that when I lost weight and the top didn't fit, I chopped it off and added, I need to adjust this, I added a yoga waistband to it so that I could salvage it and then this is just like a target tank top so I, I told told Tessa I need to make some of the summer basics tanks so enter by when you will have all weekend to sew and then the entries will close Sunday night and I will draw a winner Monday morning or Monday afternoon I have class Monday morning so but entries are due by Sunday Sunday night like Sunday 11:59 p.m. Central Standard Time. That's when entries are due by. So I'll create the post for you to enter on Friday and then you'll have all weekend to catch up. So um, yeah and then every piece that you sew is an entry. So if you sew a cami and shorts 
create a post with your cami, create a post with your shorts. Do two separate ones, don't reply. And each item that you sew is an entry. If you do a nighty and a bralette, two separate, that's two. If you do just shorts, that's one. So um, lots of entries can happen. I'm excited to see that. So, all right, that's all I have for you today. I'll be back tomorrow. Um, my son has a baseball game tomorrow. I, it's probably going to be at one o'clock again tomorrow. So, um, post them where Linda, I will create a post on Friday that will say like Luna giveaway. And I will create that on Friday and then that's when you'll post. So we have some time. So yeah. We'll be live tomorrow for the built-in shelf bra and fold-over elastic. So, all right. Thank you for joining me, everybody. It has been a lot of fun. If you have any more questions, just feel free to email me or tag me, help at lovenotions.com or tag Kelly D. Lashmit Simonson. So, thanks.